Wow, good morning. Wow, containers, containers, containers. Uh, everybody seems to uh, talk about uh, containers these days. And, well, uh, I can understand that. They come up with uh, great uh, resource utilization. They kind of bridge the gap between um, software developers and system engineers. Uh, they uh, come up with uh, some kind of a kind of a lightweight uh, virtualization. This is uh, great stuff. But well, uh, let us start with a with a short uh, uh, morning exercise, a workout. You probably asked a couple of times during this conference. So, who of you have say heard of or played around or researched a little bit about? Uh, um, container virtualization like Docker or Rocket or NSpawn, something like that. Wow, those are virtually all hands up. But now the second question, who actually uses uh, this kind of technology in a um, uh, production environment? Wow, that's still impressive, but uh, this is only a fraction um, of uh, the first number. So. Uh, I was asking how actually come, and um, uh, Forrester and Red Hat uh, conducted a, a survey earlier this year, and they asked uh, people about uh, um, container virtualization adoption, and the interesting number was this 53% uh, of the decision makers had concern about security uh, in the container field. That was their uh, top number one um, issue uh, in this survey. So to put this uh, in, a, in a short question, uh, as um, Dan Walsh, he is the uh, inventor, he's also from Red Hat uh, of uh, the SA uh, Linux framework, he asked the question, do containers actually contain? What about the security features of uh, containers? Well, <coughs> And uh, to, invest, uh, to investigate that, I looked up for uh, a Russian proverb. I'm not a native or not even uh, a very good um, a Russian speaker. It uh, translates to doverai, no proverai, and uh, means trust but verify. And this uh, Russian proverb uh, was adopted by a couple of very different um, well, leaders. To the left, um, Vladimir Lenin, the leader of the communist revolution, and um, Ronald Reagan, former president of the United States. And both used the same term, trust but verify. Maybe we can also adopt it uh, to this uh, subject of uh, um, container virtualization. To actually do so, uh, I researched a little bit and uh, tried to figure out a number of uh, actual threats um, that uh, come with uh, container virtualization. And let me see. The threat number one is the uh, attack surface. Well, this is a real technical uh, subject. Um, if you try as a, if you take the role of an attacker and try to attack a technical system, uh, you look what can I actually access? What is the API uh, of my uh, attack target? And um, if you have a very simple, simplistic uh, API with just a, a few calls, that is easy uh, for the defender to protect, but it's uh, difficult for the attacker to attack because there are so uh, little uh, different uh, options you have uh, to actually attack. But if you look uh, at uh, Docker, it has a very complex attack surface because the attack surface is the Linux kernel itself. And the Linux kernel, uh, which is shared uh, in a um, container environment by all containers, uh, consists of several system calls, not only several, but several hundred uh, system calls nowadays, I was kind of surprised and even shocked to uh, find out that uh, by the last time I checked, 
the number of uh, Linux uh, system uh, calls surpassed the number of 400. When I was uh, back in university, we had something in a typical Unix system, uh, something like 120 system calls, like open, read, write, close, and, and stuff like that. But now there are 400. And more or less, you have to protect each and every of them inside the Linux kernel. And this is really hard work. But fortunately, um, we in the open source uh, community have a very strong community and a strong developer community. And uh, the um, Linux kernel community introduced uh, a great number of controls that keep track of uh, accessing this uh, complex API, naming the namespaces, the C groups, the capabilities, features in the Linux kernel, and so on and so on. But still, we've seen a couple of minor uh, attacks to um, uh, container virtualization like Docker uh, in the past, and some of them actually uh, uh, were part of exploiting some, well, esoteric uh, kind of system call, uh, for example. But that has been, well, more than a year ago, and uh, after that, uh, the developers uh, did a very, very great job uh, to improve uh, further the um, security of the container virtualization. And they still do to the very day. And um, I think we can even uh, learn lots about uh, the subject uh, here on the conference. But there are other threats as well. Architecture. We've uh, uh, just uh, heard a great talk about uh, um, architecture already, and uh, I've seen in the program there are several talks um, that uh, uh, look into this uh, subject. Architecture is crucial for the overall security uh, of an application, especially of a web-based application. So if you uh, have a secure single component like a, a very well protected um, uh, container um, that is kind of worthless if the overall environment um, is insufficient. So if you lack uh, proper firewalling, and proper uh, load balancing facilities and stuff like that, um, it's very difficult uh, to protect your environment. And this also uh, uh, extends um, to scalability, by the way. Um, because security not only consists of confidentiality uh, and integrity, but also uh, in protecting uh, the availability uh, of your services. And uh, one great means uh, to ensure uh, availability is to, uh, to be able to actually scale up. So make sure that uh, your Architecture uh, reflects that. Frag number three, unauthentic sources. Wow, it's a great picture, I think. <laughs> well, um, Docker comes up with a very nice and convenient feature, the Docker Hub. Uh, so you can very easily, with a single command line, fire up a, a pre-configured uh, web server with, uh, with a database uh, included or uh, a programming, a scripting uh, environment uh, just um, implemented, even with additional features. Um, that is very easy with a single command line. But on the other hand, are you really sure who set up this code uh, and what is uh, actually running inside this uh, um, uh, container? That is a very important question to ask because um, it's very easy to come up um, uh, with a container and upload it uh, to the uh, Docker Hub uh, with some additional uh, backdoors uh, are built in. So especially Docker comes up with a, a, a great opportunity to actually um, um, answer this, this, this threat because uh, of the very simple and easy to uh, comprehend uh, Docker file, um, it is very easy to, to check and to verify actually um, what is running inside. So 
to be honest, the same question, unauthentic sources, applies to uh, all and every uh, open source and even extends uh, more um, to proprietary software as well. So know what is uh, actually running inside your containers. And we have a thread number four for completeness. I, I want to uh, mention this as well. Turning off security features. Um, for example, Docker has a lot of uh, very uh, um, uh, interesting and uh, powerful features um, that are um, typically turned off in the default and for a good reason. So, for example, it is very convenient uh, uh, to mount or to export a file system, uh, um, a block device uh, from the host into the container. But if you do so, you open up a back channel from the container up to the host. Is that really what you uh, wanted to in the first place? Um, you can uh, turn off uh, a number of um, uh, system calls that are uh, disabled by default uh, with some extra command lines that may come in handy and that may be also necessary in some specific situations. But uh, if you really need them, make sure uh, that you understand the impact. All right. So just to give a, a quick wrap up for essential facts and tips about security uh, in a, a container environment. Already we have a whole bunch of security measures built in and uh, um, different, and sometimes competing, that is I think a, a very good uh, uh, thing uh, to have uh, some kind of competition in this, in this field. Um, so the developers are still uh, improving the security, and this is an ongoing process. So um, uh, try to keep track of those changes. Containers, and this is a, a direct quote from, the, uh, from, from Docker Inc., from the uh, developers of Docker. Containers protect against mistake, but not abuse. So. Uh, make sure that you don't put all your eggs in one basket, like the, uh, the, doc the Docker basket. Um, implement some additional security features, like firewalls and, and uh, a good architecture that protects uh, your data and your, your business. And number four, as I just uh, said, never rely on resources you don't trust. Well. If you have more questions, maybe more technical questions uh, uh, about uh, container security as time permits right now, there are the great office hours today. Uh, during lunch break, I was told that it starts at 1 and 15 and I'll be in the office. So after a uh, um, quick lunch, uh, drop by, ask me a question, let's discuss about uh, container security, how you implemented it, uh, what uh, you think is uh, still lacking, or just send me an email to my email address. Thank you for your interest, and uh, have a great conference. <laughs>